we're going to talk about risking all. Who's ready to risk all? And I know every one of y'all are, so I don't even really have to worry about that. Everybody watching online, if you're watching us, then that means you're willing to risk it all. And uh, the week before, I, I was on sabbatical, and I spent a whole week just seeking God. And uh, at 3 a.m., listening to a drum party beneath my room. <laughs> I call every, I call downstairs, and I'd be like, uh, you know, the drums are playing again. He's like, okay, we'll get right on that. Next day, drums are playing again. Okay, we'll get right on that. Uh, the next day, he, they're like, we're, they're checking out. Yep, no, nope, they didn't check out. So they finally moved me, but it was the end of the week by then. But that's okay. You know, God is good. And But he had so much to say. And, you know, some of it was personal, but some of it was for us. And one of the things that he said for us as the gathering and as the body of Christ is that he is going to build his body. And he's going to build his body strong. And that... Um, it will be in a way that is unexpected to us. You know, we all have a, a discipleship formula. We all have a, a way that we think everybody should go. But he's going to do it in a way that's going to be unexpected to us. And that part of what our call as the gathering and our gathering web church is to reach those who are disconnected and who are longing to fulfill their purposes and to help them find their place. And he said, do not shy away from what I'm giving you. So that's all of us. We can't shy away from what we're giving us. And he gave me this white package, and it was kind of, it had a shape, but it was formless. You know how you see things that don't really, you can't quite uh, define. And, and as I'm holding it, it breaks open in my hand. It just kind of burst open. And the letters, word, pop out of it, W-O-R-D. And it was just like radiating um, brilliance. And he said, consume my word, eat and drink my word, every letter, every sentence, let my word be your foundation. And, um, and he gave me this scripture to go with it. It's Psalms 119, 73 and 74. It says, your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me. Now think about that word. Because I have hoped in your word. We want to be the people that others are glad to see in the body because we have entrenched ourselves in the word of God. We, we have found that place of just letting the word completely saturate us, that that is our hope, that is our truth, that is our foundation, that is what we stand on. That's what we're doing. So, um, so, I, so I picked this high wire because I just kept seeing, do you guys know who the Flying Walendas are? So they've been around since I think 1906 or maybe even a little before then. And before they were famous for uh, having a 12-chair stack with people on it on their high wire with nothing to catch them. And so they've, they've been around, and in 2020, are at our old church, I mean, not 2020, uh, in the year 2000, when the world was going to come to an end, but it didn't, so we're still here, uh, we decided to have this big 2000 celebration, and we had the Flying Wolindas come. And they set up the high wire at our church and the whole thing. And the granddad and the granddaughter did the act. And they got up on the high wire, nothing below. And, you know, it, it was quite a sight to see, especially close up and personal. And the granddaughter gets on a chair that's on her grandfather's shoulder and sits while he walks across. And he shares his testimony. And he preaches the gospel. And he does an invitation. And, of course, that legacy has continued. Nick Walenda, who is, I don't know if y'all saw him walk across the Grand Canyon, Niagara Falls, and the volcano in Nicaragua uh, just recently in 2020. But he goes across these things because it's his passion, it's his heart, it's his legacy. But he worships as he walks. And he's mic'd while he's he, he He declares the word as he walks. He, you know, he, he worships Jesus as he walks across this high wire, across the Grand Canyon, across a volcano, across Niagara Falls. He is, he is doing this 
while exalting Christ so all the world can hear. Now, that is not my calling. Dodge, I dodged that bullet. <laughs> Probably not any of yours. I know y'all pretty well. But just think about that. Think about the importance of risking it all for him. And we all risk in different ways. We're not all called the same. But, you know, we're not all asked to do the same thing. We do it in different ways. So that's what we're going to talk a little bit today. It was the most interesting thing to watch uh, just the granddad and his daughter and, and nothing underneath. And, you know, all the parents are going, <gasps> every move, every walk. You know? <laughs> but, you know, they knew what they were doing. And they've, they've had loss. I think it was in 1963, they had a fall where they had their 12 chairs and everybody had their position in the chairs and they had a fall. And I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, five of them died. One of them was crippled the rest of their life. But that didn't stop them from the call they believed that God had given them and uh, Nick Walinda has carried it on. But like I said, that's not our call. It's not my call, it's not your call. Whew. But when we look at each other's calling and what they do, sometimes we think, I don't know how you do that. I could never do that. And you're like, of course you couldn't do it because that's not what God's asking you to do. Just like I couldn't do what you do, you know, because we're all so different. So we're going to turn to Acts 19 and we're going to talk about very much what uh, Jennifer prayed over us and released over us because we are in a time where it's fun. Say it's fun. I'm having fun. Whether you are or not, you're declaring it. So that makes it true. So if you declare a thing, it will be established for you. Just so expect fun to come your way, just in case you're not having fun yet. Right, Jean? And... Um, but there's uncertainty. But there's assurance and confidence in what we do. So uh, let's, let's start reading a little bit. And I've got a few things I want to talk about. So as it happened, uh, Acts 19.1. As it happened, while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Now, in our room, probably the people watching us online, of course, our web church, they're like, huh, I can't even imagine that. But growing up, the Holy Spirit was not a part of my church experience. It was the Holy Ghost, which no one talked about. There was the Apostles' Creed, which we repeated. But the Holy Spirit was not, did not get an invite. And what, whatever reason, doesn't make any difference to me because, you know, that's not my area. That's not my responsibility. But it took... Uh, a whole bunch more years before I realized the Holy Spirit was the part of the Trinity that dwelled in us, that empowered us to do what God had called us to do. So there is not only a whole bunch of people that don't know Jesus, but there's a whole bunch of people in the church that have never encountered the Holy Spirit. And this is part of what God is breaking open for us. And we have to remember that if you don't know the triune God, it's like when you're in business, you may only, you work with someone, you may only know them in, in context of what you work with and, and what they do for you and how, what, how they uh, are employed by the business. You might not know that they have three kids and, and they've been married for 20 years or whatever. You know, if we only know one portion of God, then we're missing the key part that brings the wholeness to our relationship with him. Right? right. Yes, good. Uh, verse 3, it says, And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized, uh, baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Jesus Christ. 
When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Amen. So what I want to talk about a little bit, and we're going to go through most of Acts 19, so, ju so just be ready. But God is releasing, and you know that my word for this year, I've preached on it here a couple times. You can look it up online if you want to go back and listen to it. It's fear and fire. God is releasing the fire of the Holy Spirit on us. There is a quaking and a fear of the, of the presence of the Lord being released around us. You know, we've been through a season where church was fun. And we just all had our Holy Spirit parties. And we did our fire tunnels. And, you know, we, we just had our own little thing. But God is like breaking open what he has built in us to stretch us to go beyond what we're familiar with. And we've got to be willing to risk everything in order to jump in to this breaking open that is occurring. And uh, as we were praying this morning, you guys should come at 930. We just have a blast praying. <laughs> we, do, we do the pre-fill. <laughs> but um, as we were praying this morning, I, I, I just was... Uh, just thanking God for this outpouring that is happening. I saw Sean Foltz, is, was, I think it was in San Diego, and there are people, you know, on the ground, on their knees, just falling down be before the presence of God. And, and Mario Murillo is just, you know, people are just going crazy, and they, they cannot pack the tents enough. I mean, it's falling out. It's f overflowing. It's like... The old time revival has has coming with a whole new signature on it. Yeah. We are we can't look at what was done before. We have to look at what God is doing now. Right. And there is this fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit yeah. refilling us, refreshing us. Um, I, I kept on thinking about uh, it's like filling up our gas tank. You know, He's refilling us. Has everybody ever been to the Seven Eleven and getting a big gulp? Okay, pretend like you don't know what it is. We're all healthy people. We don't drink 32-ounce sodas. But, <laughs> but that's what it is. Uh, my old boss used to every day at like 2 o'clock, he's like, I got to go have a big gulp. So we'd go get him a big gulp, 32 ounces of Diet Coke. Um, but this is a healthy big gulp. It's the big gulp of the Holy Spirit. And that is what's being released. And what's happening is things are happening to us and through us that we don't understand. But it's this time of just unusual yeah. miracles. And I'm going to share a word that both Matt and Jean gave the other night. But let me just read a little bit more and then we'll go from there. Um, even when Miguel was leading worship this morning, he said, you know, we're not ashamed of the praying in tongues. We're not ashamed of releasing your power through, through that spiritual language. Uh, there is a breaking open of that. I'm going to skip over to verse 11. Oh, no, I'm not because there's something I want to say about this. And uh, verse 8. And let's see. Yes, verse 8. And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some... But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily. So I want us to understand from this. There's going to be some within the body that will rail against what God is doing. But we cannot... Uh, get into a spitting match with them. We have to stay true to what God has called us to do. And if they're with us, they're with us. If they're not, that's not on us. And that is not our responsibility. They're either with us all the way, and they want to be a part of partnering, like we were talking about partnering, Rafa House, partnering, Jen and them coming down. They either want to be a part of the move of God 
or we're going to move on without them. And God will work on their heart. We don't have to worry about trying to drag somebody with us because the more we try to drag somebody with us means the more that we're held back from moving forward in what God wants us to do. How many ever have tried to drag their kid through a store? It does not work out well. It does not work out well. When you're trying to drag someone into the presence of God, when you're trying to make them receive what God has for them or make them jump into the river, into the big gulp of God, it's not going to work out well if they don't want to go. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be contending for someone and something that they don't want. So it becomes a striving season for us instead of a flowing in the river of God's season for us. And it's okay to move on and allow God to draw them into where they need to be. It's hard because how many people want everybody to experience everything that God has? I know I do. I know there have been times that I have just poured out and poured out and called and maybe harassed, maybe, could call it harassment, but because I know that God has it. I know that if they'll just open their heart, God will pour it in and they will be wrecked. Their family will be wrecked. Their business will be wrecked. I know, but you can't make someone do something they're not ready to do. We have to wait on the Lord. So that's enough of that. Now we're going to get into the fun stuff. (laughs) Miracles. Miracles. Verse 11. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Woo! That is, a, that is enough to preach. That is enough to preach. You know, God is inviting us into unusual yeah. miracles. And I'm going to share a word with you guys that Jean gave me and then Matt gave me later. Because if I'm receiving something from the Lord, that means that we're all receiving it. I get it for you. Just like uh, um, B was sharing about that abundant flow and the scepter and all this kind of stuff. Everyone who heard that word can put a demand on that because that word that God gave him was released into us. And so we can all become a part of what God is doing. So remember that. Remember that. You know, we began our revival experiment probably about a year and a half ago. We had our healing rooms for five years where we opened up. We had God do amazing things. And God said, the healing rooms are too easy. I was like, Phew. He said, I want you to start a revival experiment where you come and let me do whatever I want to do. And we have no idea. The Thursday nights, we do it once a month on Thursday nights. Sometimes we call it a revival experiment. Sometimes it's a miracle service. It just depends on what God is breathing. And part of it is because we don't really know what's happening. We really don't. We come, we pray, and we just let God be God. But the thing about that is, is it pushes you to go beyond what your normal is. If God's going to move and you don't have, like there's no sermon prepared, there is worship prepared, but there's, you know, we come and we're, we all talk to each other. You got anything? Nope. Got anything? Jean said, I might have something on faith. Well, it turned out to be an awesome thing on faith. You can watch it online if you want to go back and look at it. But God is teaching us to move in a way that we aren't prepared for. And that's what it means to risk it all. Because he's teaching us that if, if we're going to roll on the floor, which might have happened, if, if we're going to take a little run around the building, which might have happened, if we're going to do those things, we just have to say yes. And the more we learn, like Paul didn't say, oh, I've got this great idea. Get my handkerchiefs, get my aprons, get my stuff together. I'll wipe my sweat on it. And you runners go out and and lay it on people and they'll get healed. That was not an idea that Paul came up with. That was not the idea of man. 
it was an outpouring of the overflow that Paul carried within him because he risked it all for God. It was an outpouring of his pursuit of God and all that God had for him. We all carry that ability within us. We all carry that fire within us. And our revival experiment, God is trying to teach us not to rely on our own understanding like we just sang. He's teaching us to rely on his very breath coming across us and saying, do this. And then he waits for our yes. And if there's not a yes, then it stops what the next thing is he wants to do because we've blocked the move of the Spirit trying to flow in this place through us, through our hearts, through his presence, and whatever you want to describe it. When we don't obey that move from God, the flow that's going to happen stops. It just stops. It just stops. And the only way that this outpouring that's happening right now will continue in a mighty way is if we risk whatever he says with a giant yes and an action to follow it. That's it. That is really it. We can all say, you know, God, uh, it's just not the right timing, which I'm sure all of us have said. I know I have said it. Uh, We can say that, but God doesn't care what our timing is. He doesn't care because he's got a plan for us right now. He had a plan during worship. He, you know, he, he has a plan during the word. He had a plan for the word that Jen released over us. He has a plan. And, and, and if she would have said, no, everything I had I've already released, I've got nothing for you, then what she imparted for us would not have been released. We've got to have that yes. Is it a perfect yes? Is everything we do perfect? Far from it. But God is perfect, and he can use our imperfection to allow the Holy Spirit to drastically change us. And I know I didn't get all the testimonies from Thursday night service, but on Friday, I had multiple calls and texts about what God did in the process of Thursday night when they came. Multiple calls and texts. And... uh, so, so God is doing these strange and unusual miracles that he's pouring out in a way that we do not understand. Uh, Miguel was reading, singing a song on Thursday night, and he kept on singing, Break Every Chain. And I kept thinking he was saying, Break Every Shame. And I was like, huh. So finally I got up and I said, I think God wants to break the shame, blah, blah, blah. And there was, there was a release. You know, there was a breaking But if I hadn't gotten up and done that, which seems so simple, but we all know that when we're hearing something that is out of what is normal, then what happens is we're trying to compute, God, what are you saying to me? And we've got to be in an an experimental environment so that we're able to practice what God is doing. We've got to be able to practice here so when we go out there, we've got a little bit of uh, experience underneath our belt. Right. Yeah. And that's the whole point of getting together and just sharpening and learning and thinking, wow, that was a lot of fun. Like, what happened on Thursday night? We could have never figured that out. <laughs> and it unfolded as we went. You know, it would unfolded like, you got something, you got something, what's God doing? You know, it just unfolded. But that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be so filled with his spirit that he can flow without a dam blocking what he's trying to do. You know, his word says that out of us flow the river of living water, the Holy Spirit out of us. So this unusual miracle season that we're in is what brings condemnation toward us but it also brings transformation for him it brings this fight over what God is doing 
whether it's real or not. But it also brings the manifestation of who he is for those who are willing to receive. And that is part of this whole revival thing. I want to read this word that Jean gave me. Like I said, it is for us. It, and, and I believe it is for um, the body, um, the bigger body. But uh, first of all, Matt said to me, uh, strange and unmusical, uh, musical. <laughs> Okay, strange and unusual usual miracles, no doubt, go for it. So understand that if we're going to have strange and unusual miracles, and we're not going to doubt, and we're going to go for it, that means we're all going to jump in together. That means we all have to say, yes, th I, this is where we're going. And uh, Pastor Jean gave the word, it says, Cindy, you're going to sense, just as you have sensed the prophetic anointing, and, and step um, and since the healing in the service, you will begin to sense the gift of faith step into the service. Yes. You're going to declare some things that even frighten your own mind. Now, you know the only way that we're going to have breakthrough and move to this into a fuller manifestation, because it has already started, of this season that we're in, yes. is we're going to have to Take the things that frighten us and go ahead and step into it. Like, that frightens me. Going over a volcano, that frightens me. It says, God is adding the gift of faith, particularly to the prophetic. It says, we've been afraid to prophesy. We've been afraid to declare certain things. But God is going to begin to breathe. And you're going to sense a confidence and a boldness rise within your heart. Don't listen to your head. Say it out loud. Don't listen to my head. Because <laughs> your head will talk, talk you out of it. It says, but listen to your heart. Speak those things he is giving you because the gift of faith will rise within you. Rise up within you and cause you to declare things that you wouldn't normally declare. It will cause you to wield a sword like you've never wielded before. I am, I, I am with you, says the Lord. The gift of faith I am imparting to you. The gift of faith. Now listen to this. Along that uh, will come its twin brother working in miracles. I am birthing that in this house into a dimension, a new manifestation in this hour. Birthing the miraculous and birthing uh, of extraordinary faith. Remember that this word is for all of us. It was given specifically to me, but it is for all of us because God is birthing in his body. He is birthing in our gathering family. He's birthing yeah. this extraordinary faith, this extraordinary miracles to be able to do what he wants to do in this hour. And, um, but it's, gonna, it's high risk. It's high risk. And it's not high risk. It's not like gambling that we're going to throw the dice and hope we hit the, the snake eyes. The high risk is to our flesh and to our mind. Because with God, there is no risk. He is God. Yeah. So if he's saying this is what we're going to do, then this is what we're going to do. Right. The risk is, can I do it? Can I come up with the boldness, the courage, and the confidence to do it? Can I push myself beyond my flesh and my mind? Can I not intellectually talk myself out of what God is calling me to do so that my spirit can follow the Holy Spirit yeah. into the birthing of what he wants to do in this hour? Yeah. That's what he's asking us. Can we check our mind at the door so our spirit can follow his? Whew, that is hard for a bunch of intellectual people, right? <laughs> That's hard for us that have access to Google, right? <laughs> because we, we, we're so used to this is how you operate, God. It is programmed within my brain. I have experienced this, that, and the other. I know that if I do this, then you will do that. God's like, I don't care what you know. Because I'm about to expand your knowledge. 
out of the experiential encounters with me. And the only way to have real expansion is to take real risk. It is really the only way. We've got to, you know, tattoo the word on us, in us, through us, fill ourselves fresh with the Holy Spirit every single day and say, take me on that high wire, God. I don't need a net because I got you. You are my net. I don't need a net. I just need to take the first step. And when I take that first step, it may be a little shaky. It may be a little unfamiliar. But it will be powered by the Holy Spirit. It will be the fire of the Holy Spirit that will, that will light the way for me to go when I take the first step. We may not see the fire when we take the first step. But it is the faith that ignites the fire that gets us where we need to go. Ooh, Jesus. Whew, Lord. Okay, I'm going to end with this one thing. So, uh, last year, 2-3-2020, the Chiefs had won the Super Bowl the day before. And the word came out that Bob Jones gave. And I have shared this word repeatedly. I, I met Job, Bob Jones. He prophesied over me and Chuck. He was part of our Morning Star. Very unusual, interesting, gifted, uh, scary prophet. Because when he starts talking to you, you're like, oh, Jesus, let, it, <laughs> let me receive what he's got. He looks at you and he says, hey, you there? You're like, oh, yes, that's me. <laughs> So he, he gave this word a while back. He died in 2014, Valentine's Day, 2014, 2-14-14. And uh, uh, what's his name? Sean Bowles, um, yeah, shared it. He said, the awakening is a monumental movement launching a new decade of awakening America back to God at a critical time in our nation's history. Right? So that was almost exactly one year ago, right? right? This will be the spark of America's third great awakening. Yeah. Bob said, when the chiefs win, God is raising up his apostolic chiefs around the nation. And one at a time, at one time he said nations. And we will see the greatest awakening across our country that will ignite an awakening across the world. Now, you tell me that 2020 was not a demonic attack against the word that was ignited on 2-2-2020, two, two, right? 2-2-2-2-2-2, two, 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 two. yep, yep. But that does not deter God from what he has committed to do through us. The enemy has tried to derail us. And he might have thrown us off a little bit. But I'm telling you right now, we will not be derailed. We will not be unearthed from what God has called us to do, what he has declared in this hour. Yeah. This right now is the greatest awakening America has ever seen. Yeah. And even though it may not look like that with our natural eyes, it looks like that with our spiritual eyes. Yeah. Our spiritual eyes can see the awakening yeah. of America. They can see the awakening of the body. Yeah. They can see crazy things happening at night that we can't explain when we gather, even on Sunday mornings, when we gather, we see these things that we can't explain, but that's only to build us up in this awakening of unusual miracles, of unusual harvest, of unusual quaking of the Lord in this country. So we are not discouraged. We are not afraid. We are not dis anything. We are more than ever fired up and what God has for us. And I believe that uh, now that we have re, uh, what do you call it, uh, found our footing, right. 
you know, on that high wire, when he walks, he has this giant pole that I forget how long it is, but it's like 12 feet long or something that keeps the balance. And every so often when he was going across the Grand Canyon, we watched it. He, you could see that the wind would whiff up and it would start going like this, but he never lost his balance. And I believe, even though this past year we may have done this a little, we have not lost our balance. The Holy Spirit is within us. The awakening is happening now, and it will continue to fire across our nation. It will not end. It will not stop. And that, that impartation of faith, that impartation of unusual miracles, we receive, Lord, because we are a dynamic, critical part of this move. You know, I always say, when God says, oh, God doesn't need you to do what he wants to do, that is actually not true. God has chosen to use us in order to accomplish what he has planned. So each one of us is needed in this critical hour, in our anointing, in our calling, in our purpose for what God has planned. Amen? Amen. Woo! God, let's stand up. I'm going to pray over us. God is a God of fire. Everywhere I go, I got to release the fire because I just believe there's fire for us. Woo! So, you get some? Are you waving at me? Or do you have some? Okay, why don't you come on up and bring your mic and then we'll. Then we'll um... You know, as uh, Matt was giving the word of the Lord and even. Uh, uh, B, as when you were sharing you know, your uh, the testimony of the encounter you had with God, uh, we were talking about you know the being persistent. You know, what is this one thing you've been believing for? And I, I was going through my heart. I mean, there's a lot of things I'm praying for, a lot of things I'm believing for, but there's been one overriding thing. And and brother, when you said the scepter is still extended. Because I, I, I'll be honest with you, I've kind of backed off of praying this, uh, not not for any other reason, just being distracted. Yeah. But from but, but from the prophet Zechariah, uh-huh. ask of the Lord rain yeah. <laughs> in the yeah. time of the latter rain. Yeah. yeah. I've been carrying this thing. I've been carrying yeah. this thing as I know, and I know many many others are. And, and it, it, it's just been if I got if, if 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 I don't see anything else answered in my lifetime i want to see this prayer answered yeah. Yeah. that we see that, that we see this outpouring and i believe that the nations in 2020 began to be positioned for this outpouring yeah. and, I, and i'm telling you yeah. we we're we are in that time so uh now's the time for those bold crazy declarations Ooh. now's the time for that for that gift of faith to manifest uh-huh. because it, it is absolutely going to shake the world yeah. the, the rain is about to be poured out uh, uh-huh. like uh-huh. you've never seen yeah. before and so i just 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 thank uh, just thank god for the time that we're in Amen. The times look scary, but I'm going to tell you, God's about to be scarier. Amen. The rain, the rain, glory to God. He says he'll make bright clouds. That means lightning. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you're nervous of thunderstorms, you haven't seen nothing yet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The rain's about to be released, and it's being released. Amen. We're getting, we're, I'm hearing uh, uh, thunder in the distance. Glory to God. I'm see, it's like a cloud the size of a man's fist. Amen. Hallelujah. The rain is here. The rain is here. The rain is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You can keep that. So, God, we just thank you for your reign, the reign of your fire, the reign of your presence, the reign of your uh, of this impartation of great faith that's welling up in us, this boldness, this confidence, these unusual miracles. I love the twins, the 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 faith and the miracles. So, Lord, we love to be empowered by those twins in Jesus' name. And God, we receive. We receive. Whether our mind can conceive, our spirit can receive. So, God, we receive, we receive, we receive. And, Lord, we are walking the high wire with you, and we will do what you have called us to do. It doesn't matter what it is. We will take that step and watch the fire fall, watch the fear of the Lord be exalted, and to know that people are coming because they are desperate 
to encounter you. Let us be the facilitators of your presence in all that we do. And we love you so much, Jesus. Amen. Fresh feeling for everybody. Amen.